What's up my stat stars, Michael Prinjak here. And in this video, I wanna show you how the numerous calculator can handle any question dealing with the normal distribution that you throw at it. In fact, it'll make these really difficult normal distribution questions for the AP exam, well, really, really easy. Way easier than using the barbaric Z tables where you gotta look values up and don't get very accurate results. Or even way better than using the Tandy 4 calculator where you have to use normal CDF, you can't see a pretty picture of everything and you gotta use 99 or negative 99, kind of confusing. Well, the numerous calculator makes any question you throw at it with the normal distribution super, super simple, and I can't wait to show you right now. All right, let's say a particular problem throws at us that a set of data falls in normal distribution with a mean of 58 and a standard deviation of 7, and we might be asked a couple different probability or proportion-based questions with this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our um, numerics calculator. We're going to hit the home button. This takes us to all the different apps. We're gonna move down till we see the app for distribution. Picture there even looks like a normal distribution and click on OK. Now there's several different distributions you can work with, but in this video we're gonna focus on how to use the normal distribution. There'll be video, other videos for these other things here shortly. All right, so click on normal distribution and OK, and it's gonna ask you for two things, to define the parameters, the mean of your population and the standard deviation of your population. Now, one more time, you cannot use the normal distribution unless the problem specifically says that your data falls in normal distribution, which of course ours does. So we're gonna type in the mean of 58, hit OK, the standard deviation of seven, hit OK, and then we're gonna to go to next, hit OK, and notice it draws us a very, very beautiful picture, and there's three things at the very top here. First, we have a drop down box where we can hit OK and we can select below, in between, or above. That's to the left, in between, or to the right. Let's leave it on below for right now. Then over here we have the probability or the proportion that a particular value x is less than or equal to, well you type in the value that the question asks, and then over here it's gonna spit out the proportion or the probability of data that is below that particular value. So let's do a quick question here. So what proportion of data in this normal distribution is below 50. So right now we're gonna leave it on below and it's shaded to the left, that's below. We're gonna type in a 50 right here, hit okay, and boom, look at that beautiful picture. It shades the area below 50 and it tells us that about 12.7% of data in this population is going to be below 50. All right, let's talk about above 72. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here, hit okay. We're gonna select the above or to the right option and then we're gonna go ahead and type in 72 and go ahead and hit okay and boom, notice it shades the area above 72 and it tells us roughly 2.28% of data is above 72. Really, really simple. It can even handle in between questions. So go ahead and select okay, go to the middle one there for in between and let's say we have a question that says what proportion of data is in between 50 and 60. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna type in a 50 for the left side and a 60 for the right side and hit okay and it shades us the area in between 50 and 60 and tells us there's about 48.6% of data. Nice and simple. All right, it also could be worked backwards. So let's say we have a question that says, you know, what value in the data set has 20% below it? Or what value would be the probability of getting a value be 20% below? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back over here to the options for left, center, and right. Again, below, above, in between. And we're gonna select below or to the left because we did say below. But instead of entering a data value, we're gonna enter in the 20%. So this is like a percentile. Percentile has the percentage of data below, so we're typing in 20% below. Hit OK, and notice it shades that area, and then it populates the X value that has 20% below it at 52.10865. Pretty awesome. All right, what about asking for the value that has 5% above it? Well, a couple different options here. We can actually leave it on below and change this to 0.95 because if there's 5% above, there's 95% below. So that's one way we could do it there. Or we could actually go over to the options for left, center, and right, above, below, into the center. Click on above, and this time we're gonna type in 0.05 for 5% above and we get that same value of 69.51398. Uh, so again, that is 5% above it, or again, 95% below it. So really, really cool. But there's a couple other questions that this uh, number calculator can handle that are absolutely amazing. So imagine we have this question. We say that there is a, the mean of a population that falls in normal distribution is 35, 
and a known value of 30 is at the 10th percentile. What's the standard deviation? All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to where it says define the parameters. And it tells us that we have a you know, set of data that does follow normal distribution with a mean of 35. So we're gonna change the mean to 35. But the question is, what's the standard deviation? We, we don't know it. So when we get the standard deviation here, we're gonna hit the delete button or clear button, and we're just gonna leave it blank. Then we're gonna hit next and go okay. Now, the given information said that we had a value of 30 that is 10, that's at the 10 percentile, which means there's 10 percent below it. So I'm going to make sure that I have highlighted the, the below option. And again, we were told that a particular value of 30 has 10 percent below it. So I'm filling in these items over here. Again, hit OK, use the arrow to move over. So what I'm telling the calculator is that 10% of data is below 30, and all I know is that the mean is 35. Hit OK, and boom, there you go. It not only creates the picture that shows you 10% below 30, but the bottom of the screen, it gives you that standard deviation of 3.902. How awesome is that? And this is a very common AP statistics question where they ask you to find the mean or standard deviation, and they give you a particular known value, and you, know, you might know a percentage above it or a percentage below it. All right, let's do another one very similar to this. And this question says the depth of water on any given day at a particular pier follows a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 2.5 feet. 5% of days the water is above 45 feet. What's the mean? All right, so we're going to go all the way back to this home screen here. We're going to clear this out. And we're going to go down. Well, actually, usually you have to start off with something the mean. So I'm just going to put something there. Standard deviation, they said is 2.5. Then I'm going to go back to the mean and hit delete. Leave the mean blank. But it said we knew the standard deviation of this particular um, scenario was 2.5 feet. All right, we're going to go to next. And now once again, the given information was that 5% of days the water is above 45. So I'm going to go ahead over here and I'm going to select the above option. That's to the right. And I'm going to type in that we know that 45%, 45 days, excuse me, excuse me, hold on. 5% um, of the days were above 45 feet. So we're putting the value of 45 feet there, and we're going to put in 0.05 for 5%. Be careful you don't put in 0.5, that's 50%. And then hit OK, and there's the mean. The mean is 40.888, and they show you the picture that has 5% above 45 feet. And again, it calculates the mean for you automatically. How cool is that? All you have to do is read the question, type in what's given to you. In this case, the standard deviation was 2.5, and we were told that a particular value of 45 has 5% above it. Now, once again, we also know that if there's 5% above it, there's 95% below it. So you could always leave this on the left-hand side or below, and then this type in, this time we would type in for the 45 below 45 would be 95% and we get that same value of 40.888, as long as you understand that. Now, if you're working with um, z-scores, for example, in inference, and you have to use a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, no worries. All you're gonna do is gonna go back here, type in a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and now you're working with the standard normal model where you're talking about z-scores. So you could say, hey, you know, what's the probability that a, um, you know, the, the data value is, you know, below a z-score of negative, or let's do positive 2.5. So this is gonna find us the percentage of data that is below a z-score of 2.5, and there it is, 0.994. So nice and simple, pretty easy to do there. So I really hope that you understand how cool this is and how awesome this is. There's all kinds of normal distribution questions that pop up on the AP statistics exam and the Numerx calculator can help you handle all of them very, very quickly and efficiently. Now, how do you access the Numerx calculator? Well, you can buy one on Amazon or through the Numerx.com, but you can also get it completely for free on their website. It's a web-based um, application that's totally fully you know ex executable it has everything you need you can also download a free app on your iphone or android phone and it's again just like the actual calculator you would buy so please check out the numbers calculator for the normal distribution it's really cool